Greetings, respective viewers. I am George from Ireland. Well, um, this video is an analysis of President Trump's attack on the squad. That's the four Democratic uh, Congresswomen. Um, so it's just a couple of days ago since President Trump invaded against them, and I shan't um, quote everything else he said. It's, um, it's been quoted extensively elsewhere. Um, it's difficult to keep up with him, and it's just wearisome um, reporting as constant screeds. Obviously, I'm not a, not a wire service, so I can't be up to the minute just trying to do commentary. Uh, uh, so it was staggering that uh, Trump had the nerve to suggest that these women ought to leave the United States. Three of them were born in the United States, born citizens. Another one came to the United States age 12, is a citizen, and all the rest of it, saying that they should get out of the country. He never says that to whites, but it's his whole America, love it or leave it attitude. Um, why am I commenting on American affairs? Well, you know, I, I, I'm concerned about the human race as a whole. Please comment on the affairs of my country. So uh, the US government, including Trump, he very often um, pokes his nose into the domestic affairs of other countries. I don't actually object to that, but uh, the thing is what source for the goose is source for the gander is he mustn't take exception when other people um, uh, have something to say about American politics. And obviously the United States is the most consequential, consequential country, so you can set the tone for racists around the world. So. Um, why does it matter that, that um, their parents or grandparents came from another country? Now, apart from Native Americans, everybody came somewhere from somewhere else. Okay, even Native Americans, you want to get back 10,000 years, came from somewhere else. But what's the difference between a Mayflower descendant and someone who becomes an American citizen today? There's a difference of, of degree. It's not a difference of principle. Um, so whatever happened to equality? So, so, you know, no distinction of race, creed, or color. So it's shocking, it's, it's blatant racism. And of course, uh, his, his clack will say it's not racism at all. Um, so someone whose ancestors have been there since Jamestown, surely they are no different from someone who becomes a citizen today. Um, anyway, Trump has excelled himself. Uh, he's always striving to outdo himself in terms of illogic and spite. Uh, this is a personal best for Trump, but we'll see whether he can uh, exceed that. Uh, and it's really saying something to call this a personal best. Um, saying that they hate America and so on. Vile, ludicrous. And then accusing these, these women and Nancy Pelosi of foul language. And then when one of them has ever used foul language, he's often used foul language, beat the shit out of them and so on, grab them by the pussy and so forth. Uh, and racism, I don't know when these people have ever been racist at all. And they ought to apologize to Israel. I'm not sure what, not doing exactly what the current Israeli government wants. Israeli policies are highly controversial in Israel. Israelis don't have to apologize to Israel for not agreeing what the Prime Minister wants right now. Should Trump apologize to Palestine for not doing what they want? Well, he should actually, but that's a, that's a whole other issue. So Trump has been censured by Congress. When's the last time that happened? He is depraved. And there is um, so much ado about these vile remarks, and rightly so. But it's deliberate. There is a method to his madness. His remarks are a verbal burning cross on the lawn of various uh, ethnic minority communities, becoming very intimidating for them, creating a hostile atmosphere for Americans of certain ethnic and religious groups. These mordant comments, they are bound to uh, inflame uh, racial animus at this time. Uh, and then Trump had a characteristically wrathful response to these women defending themselves. So what is it about a strong woman that he finds so threatening? He's obviously a coward. Um, go back, tell them to go back. Why on earth should they go back? And look at Trump. His mother was from the United Kingdom. His parents are from Germany. No reason that he shouldn't live in the United States just because of that. Um, saying that their countries are failing. Well, they vary. Now, it's true, actually. Well, strictly speaking, um, oh, what am I talking about? Yeah, sorry. AOC, she was born in the United States, New York. Okay, her parents came from Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, not a U.S. state. But since the Jones Act of 1913, the people of Puerto Rico have automatically been U.S. citizens. So there's absolutely no question they have an absolute right to move to the United States itself, just as people from the United States can move to Puerto Rico, because they've got common citizenship. Um, saying that these countries are failing, well, it varies. I don't think Puerto Rico is failing. They had a terrible hurricane, and Trump didn't give a damn about that. Um, he's far more eager to spend time uh, spreading hatred towards ethnic minorities than he is to help American citizens that are suffering. And um, Somalia, yeah, it is a difficult situation, but I'll, I'll come on to that. And Palestine, yes, it is. 
but uh, that's partly because uh, of what other countries have done to it, or what Israel has done to it, illegally occupying um, almost the whole of Palestine for decades and uh, slaughtering its civilians in huge numbers, um, ably assisted by the United States, uh, abetted by US diplomatic support, with weapons often provided for, for free by the US government, despite knowing precisely what's going on, uh, told by numerous other governments, and there's this is unstinting support for these crimes against humanity. So uh, Palestine's problems are to a large extent of America's doing, d d deliberately caused by Uncle Sam. Saying that these women hate America, I, I see not the slenderest um, evidence for that. So they have policies that Trump doesn't agree with. Um, they would like to heal the sick. Is that hating America? To want to relieve suffering, provide affordable health care, or having people die early, avoidably? Is that loving America? When people making people suffer agony, is that loving America? I don't think so. Um, executing people, is that loving America? Particularly when some of them are innocent. Um, speaking up for the police if they shoot dead innocent black men, is that loving America? I don't think so. Um, and on and on, poisoning the environment, is that loving America? Making the uh, environment worse by pumping out toxins all the time, is that loving America? I suspect not. Wanting to privatize everything and price people out of using certain roads and so forth, is that loving America? I wouldn't say so. Getting the United States into avoidable wars, I don't think that's loving America, or lying nonstop, or um, breaking so many electoral prejudices, uh, pledges. So it, w it was a vile slur on his behalf. Um, so he's defaming them, these four horsewomen of equality. Um, he's not substantiated anything, he said. They, they, they care. And Republicans, they often want to change the United States. Fair enough, whether you agree them or not, they would like to outlaw abortion. It doesn't mean they hate the United States, or uh, let me see, they want to spend more on the military, or I'm not sure what else they'd like to do. Um, uh, they want to say oppose same-sex marriage. That's not hating the United States, just because you want to change the current dispensation. Um, so uh, these uh, Democrats, they want to make life better for everybody, but you know they get calumny from, um, from Donald Trump having to pretend the United States is absolutely perfect. It's preposterous. So it was a flagrant appeal to the basest prejudices of race and religion on behalf of Trump. Now, it's true he didn't initially name um, the quartet uh, in this. He said the four of them. And in subsequent tweets, he did name at least two of them. So um, uh, Trump's strategy is this, to keep banging on about wedge issues, to start these culture wars anew. He knows that socioeconomic issues, well, that's a, these are really a non-starter for him. Minimum wage, health care, the cost of living, uh, job security, uh, paid maternity leave, reasonable working hours, paid time off, ecological issues. All these ones are ones where the Democrats are going to win hands down. So he's got to take his ball to a different part of the beach and start talking about this, these and waving the flag more than them. I'm more of a goody-goody nationalist than you are, particularly an ethno-nationalist. We thought one of the laudable things about the United States is it's supposed to be about civic nationalism. Right, civic nationalism is that um, um, anyone of any ethnicity can belong to that country. It's not an ethno-state. So what is racism? Uh, I would hope I don't need to define it, because obviously mistreating people on the grounds of race, of thinking they shouldn't be allowed to do, do this, but we should, or they shouldn't be allowed in because of their race. Not numbers as such, or so, much, such or so much, not economic reasons necessarily, not individual reasons. You're unsuitable for this reason. You've got a criminal record, or you don't speak our language yet. But um, no, your ethnicity, they're bad. They're all bad, even though they're not all bad, they're mostly bad. So mistreating them, we're not gonna employ you, we're not gonna rent you a room, or I'm not gonna work from you, I'm not gonna buy from you or sell to you, or whatever, or I'm just gonna hate you, distrust you, I'm going to um, uh, blackguard you because of your ethnicity. That's what racism would be. And clearly this is an example of it for um, uh, non-white uh, women, um, hostile to them for their race, saying that they should go back if there's a white American whose parents came from whatever country, so far as I know, Trump has never suggested they ought to go back. Trump, who's married immigrants twice, doesn't bother me one bit. Um, anyway, Trump, he doesn't even tell the truth about his name. It's Trumpf. Um, you know, it's, it's a German name. They used to lie and claim to be Swedish Americans, not German Americans, because of anti-German prejudice. Remember, there was a lot of anti-German prejudice in the 19th century into the early 20th century in the United States, which was obviously despicable. I don't want anyone to be mistreated on the grounds of their ethnicity or national origin. So take Republic of Ireland and or the UK. Someone becomes an Irish citizen today, and she's um, from Pakistan originally. I completely accept her as Irish. She can be Irish-Pakistani or just Irish, whatever she wants to call herself. 
and has as much right to be in Ireland as I do, or supposing a Nigerian person becomes a British citizen, he or she has got as much right to be in the United Kingdom as I do, I accept them. That's fair. Uh, so the, the women he was targeting were um, Miss Presley, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, and Rachel Tlaib. I hope I pronounced those names properly. They have every right to be in the United States. It's absolutely scandalous he, he should suggest that they leave. So they want to make things better for all Americans. They want a cleaner environment. They want affordable health care, not unaffordable health care like he's done, when millions of people have been thrown off their plan. They want higher education to be free of charge. They want fewer murders. They want fewer people in prison, particularly innocent people in prison, and so on. Now, I don't agree with them with all their policies, because they're often talking about um, you know, the, the Me Too movement I don't agree with. I'm not pro-choice, for example. But that doesn't mean they hate the United States for proposing any of these changes. And actually, most Americans agree with them on most of these issues. So these people are being monstered by the gutter press. Um, uh, and yet he scorns Elizabeth Warren as Pocahontas. She's got Native American ancestry. Not very much, but it's true, she does have some. So Trump really has no common decency. He's bereft of any manners. There is no um, ethical bottom line with him. Now, many politicians are ethically suboptimal of what they do, but really he scrapes the gutter. He's the very bottom of the barrel. Um, and it's terrifying to think this is the man who has the ability to exterminate the human race. He's got his finger on the nuclear button. Um, but uh, anyway, he is um, petrified of this quartet. Women of color in power are his worst nightmare. So I think we should, um, they should obviously vote a lot more uh, ethnic minority women into high office. Um, anyway, these women are as American as, any, as anyone else. And then MAGA, remember his old uh, slogan, Make America Great Again? Was that hating America, suggesting that it wasn't great in 2016? So Trump is obviously um, very in with the hate groups. He couldn't even bring himself to denounce the KKK, a terrorist organization, which only 20 years ago was uh, murdering innocent black people and still tries to glorify those uh, sick ritual murders. Um, so he's obviously been endorsed by neo-Nazis, by the Daily Stormer and so forth. So he's incited rallies, uh, sorry, violence at his rallies, and indeed it's occurred. He's been aware of this, been on the news, he's continued to incite violence, and it's continued to happen. That's hating America, encouraging crimes of violence against other Americans. Uh, Trump, uh, he's um, constantly lying, he ignores subpoenas, he breaks the law willy-nilly. It is baffling. How on earth does he get away with this? So, um, anyway, uh, he exports jobs. He had a lot of his merchandise manufactured overseas. He married foreigners, as I said, so he's obviously a complete hypocrite. But obviously, some uh, some knuckle-dragging people are stupid enough to trust him. Um, he calling people enemies of the feet, people talk, talking about uh, respectable news organisations as being fake news, despite him pumping out fake news every day, and it's always turning it around. It's the language of the playground. I know you are. You said you are, but what am I? Then accusing Nancy Pelosi of foul language and racism, when there's um, not a shred of evidence of that at all. Um, so, uh, Trump adores America's foes. Well, Confederates and they're very fine people. Those are pro-Confederate in Charlottesville. Um, and uh, on and on, speaking up for Kim Jong-un, President Xi, and, and whoever else. So, he is blatantly racist and xenophobic. Um, and he was saying the UK has got, a, has got a rubbish government. Well, he doesn't want English Americans, Irish Americans, Welsh Americans, Scots Americans to go there. Uh, and by the way, Puerto Rico, where AOC's parents came from, is not a state in the United States. Why not? Ten years ago they voted they want to become a state because Congress won't allow it. I suppose the Republican Party, no, will be two more senators for the Democrats and about four more representatives. So um, anyway, talking about Somalia, where Ilhan Omar was born, yeah, it faces problems. Had a US military intervention, Operation Restore Hope. Did it make it better or worse? It's debatable. Ilhan Omar is not responsible for that. And she's in America, she's got the right to be there. The United States has an impact on the rest of the world. By helping the United States, she could possibly help Somalia promote good relations between the two. Women have very few rights in Somalia. There is this breakaway section of Somalia called Somaliland, the, the erstwhile British colony. Where things are much better. Perhaps that should be recognized as an independent country. But um, there's no reason why Ilhan Omar shouldn't stay in the United States, make a better life for herself. And I don't see any evidence that she's not grateful to be there. She's serving her community by getting elected. Um, Palestine, well, I've already talked about that one, about uh, the US um, uh, 
um, aiding robbery, land grabbing, racist policies, mass murder, and so forth. So if you wreck other people's countries, they might come to choose to come and choose to live in yours. Um, but there's a method to Trump's madness. He wants to bifurcate opinion. He wishes to precipitate a de deterioration in race relations. And that, of course, that worked for him in 2016. Some white supremacists were irate about the election of Obama. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's called a strategy of tension. Um, some Italians were trying this in the 1970s. So uh, mark my words, Trump will be, will be stri striving to um, stoke racial tensions in the run-up to the election, heighten white, white anxiety in 2020. He, he considers this will, will um, ginger up his base. Um, so yeah, they'll be all fired up by this and that, by bogus stories of Islamic extremism and so on. And he thinks this will motivate his core supporters. Although it will boomerang, it'll have a like effect on, on his opponents. There's a, there's a demographic decline of whites and Christians, which some white Christians find terribly troubling. So Trump may be their last stand. So he wishes to play to their fears and, and prejudices, terrify them. And so, um, but this is the future of the US, get used to it. White minority or majority minority. Um, so, because there's gonna be more power for ethnic and religious minorities. So you should make your peace with them, kiss and make up. And, and, and get used to it. No one's saying it's not gonna happen. So partly because a few fewer, fewer Christians are born, as in brought up Christians, but fewer people actually practice Christianity, people are dropping out of it. So publicly funded healthcare, so scary. That's another thing you can frighten them with. You might actually not have to pay anything extra, just your tax to be, to be cured. So some people would prefer to die in pain and have that. So Trump is trying to appeal to the past um, and reactionary sentiment, bring backery. That's one of his tactics. But his agenda is dark about um, pitting Americans at each other, setting them at each other's throats, and having all these completely regressive taxes to, to fund the billionaire class, his cronies. Um, so uh, stoking racial animus and, and spewing invective um, paid off for him so handsomely last time, it may not work this forthcoming time. Um, so he has to resort to identity issues because as I said, bread and butter, butter issue is not gonna work kitchen table politics, how are we gonna afford the things that we need? Um, we need to be always be paid more, things need to cost less, and Republicans aren't doing anything about that. So it is, as we hatred of foreigners, scapegoating them, the other, they're always to blame, not the uh, kleptocratic class. Um, there's a dislike of modernity that he appeals to as well. Um, so he's trying to divert from those major issues like healthcare, like uh, affordable tertiary education, the environment, decent wages, personal debt, national debt as well. Um, but he's failing on so many issues, not brought in some sort of replacement to the Affordable Care of Care and Patient Protection Act, not withdrawn from Syria, not withdrawn from Iraq, not withdrawn from Afghanistan, not winning the trade war. If it's so good, why, why are you suspending it? You know, there he is vacillating, what a flip-flopper over Iran, calling off the strike at the last possible minute because mm -hmm. the number of deaths it was gonna cause, as though he hadn't been informed in advance and as though he's got any compassion. So, um, he uh, can't make his mind up, he's hopelessly indecisive. And um, you know, the uh, border separation policy, he might actually uh, change his mind on that one, just like the, 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 the government shut down when he was spineless and he caved in. He may do so yet again. But for some reason, his supporters don't desert him, despite him um, uh, breaking so many uh, pledges, despite reneging on these promises to stand firm. Um, and that, that border war's not been built, not, not an inch of it and not one peso even pledged by Mexico. So he's failed, 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 even in his own terms, an absolutely ca cataclysmic failure. Um, and then there's this preposterous notion that um, some ide ideas are un-American. Well, the United States is all about freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, you can believe and say whatever you want. That's a marvelous thing. And in the 18th century, it was a great step forward. That's why there was this, there was this House Committee on Un-American Activities even from the 1930s. So certain ideologies were un-American. It's, it's preposterous. Um, the Communist Party of the United States was never banned, therefore even communism can't be anti-American per se. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's a sign of incipient totalitarianism to dub some things un-American. Remember someone saying that not even television was un-American, but surely people have the right to find their own path to contentment and not own one if they don't want to and live the life that they please. So about Iran, I mean, he's damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't, so perhaps he's trying to distract people by creating this row in Washington, D.C., okay? Um, Tucker Carlson, his guru, told him not to do it. He 
calls for a spi uh, spike in oil prices. Remember that 2003 bumper sticker of Republicans kick his ass, get the gas. If Americans are feeling the pain, um, you know, at gas stations, that will not look good for his election, his chance of being re-elected. Um, but he's marched his troops up to the precipice of war. If he backs off now, he's a weakling. Well, uh, we know he's a wimp in, in every sense, and so he might try to prove his uh, virility by killing thousands of Iranians. But if he does dust Iran with canister, what's going to happen? It's not really going to be a success, is it? All they have to do is string the war out, and America will eventually get tired and go home. Iraq and Afghanistan and other places have, have proven that. So the Iran deal was working. Iran was in its box. The US government knew that. The IAA said that. Trump twice signed off on the deal. He extended the Iran deal by over a year. And then, and then, then he, he tore it up. So the Iranians are obviously absolved of their commitments. And now they're proving that the old deal was better because they've now enriched some of the uranium, which they didn't do before. Therefore, we're all worse off than we were before. Iran is actually now closer to a nuclear bomb than it was before um, Trump shredded the deal. So it's boomeranged. It's been a massive own goal by this absolute imbecile. Um, Iran is obviously absolutely entitled to enrich uranium, as dozens of countries have done, to civilian nuclear power. And they've always said that's all they want. Um, the US does the same. Uh, they've got nuclear weapons, but they've also got civilian nuclear power. So the situation um, is uh, now so much worse than before. Somebody bombed those tankers in the Gulf. I don't know who could be a false flag trying to provide a pretext for war. Israel's egging him on. Mossad could have done it. I, I don't know who did it. So. Um, I don't actually think Trump is a racist or an anti-racist because he doesn't believe in anything. He's an egotist, believes only in himself. Um, he's appointed some black people to the cabinet. I don't think he's appointed any Latinos. But um, uh, I suppose Ilhan Omar having been born in Somalia, that's what gets him. Someone who's a typical African-American, I don't think he minds as such. I could be wrong, but he'll simply appeal to racist prejudice if he thinks that will further his agenda. Well, the only item of the agenda is his own aggrandizement. Um, so he thinks he's somehow magnified for this. Um, anyway, that's why his rhetoric is larded with all these um, allusions to the supposed evil of immigration, even legal immigration. Um, anyway, he is so uncivilized. Uh, and what's more troubling is his party has not denounced his nauseating outbursts. Um, so the Republican Party is obtuse in thinking this is going to work for them. Um, I remember it was Lyndon Johnson said you need to be able to count, that's the first rule of politics, because they're going to have to rely on ethnic minority votes more and more. Um, but it might still work in 2020. Uh, but in the long run, what's going to happen is a non-white majority. So away down south in the land of cotton, bad old times, they are not forgotten. They're not getting enough African Americans on their side, um, let alone Hispanics. They do have a considerable number of Hispanics, very few African Americans. Um, so some Republicans are very um, stubborn to recognize they can't rely solely um, on whites. Um, they're not quite enough ignorant, ignorant, bigoted whites for this to be a winning strategy for them in the long term. But some are very stiff-necked on racism. Even if they lose an election, they still do it. Does the Republican Party approve of what, approve what he's saying? Well, I'm afraid this is affirmative silence. By saying nothing, they're effectively saying yes. There have been a few honorable exceptions who've um, denounced his vile outbursts. So the Republican Party doesn't have a moral compass as part of a wider malaise in the party, mollycoddling racism. And to think of some of those titanic Republican presidents of not so long ago, George H.W. Bush or Ronald Reagan, and they would have no truck with this kind of um, despicable uh, racist bile. Um, so uh, where's the party's backbone gone? It's got no bottom line, it seems to me, on ethics. Uh, so the party's now a mesalliance between uh, the really the most sort of um, primitive hyper capitalists and racists on the other hand it's an unholy alliance because if you're a complete capitalist you don't care what someone's color is you just want to make money um, but they wanted to d divert the proletariat from exploitation by um, making them hate another group of working class people so trump is so haughty and yet so hypersensitive you know, as, as Kim Darragh said, radiates insecurity, so deeply unsure of himself, which is why he's so easily slighted, can be needled by the least thing. And his refractory period between these incendiary outbursts is getting shorter. One will be very quickly followed by another. So he's um, sought to keep the controversy aflame. Um, these uh, inflammatory uh, racist screeds, though, are losing their power to shock. The public is desensitized to them, is almost normalized now. So uh, this might not pay off for him next time, 
uh, because people are growing accustomed to it. He's seeking to heighten asperity and, and um, remember where you heard it first, he'll do a lot in the run-up to November 2020, just as another caravan will suddenly be spotted at the opportune moment making its way through Mexico. So he has degraded uh, political debate into um, mudslinging of the worst kind, and uh, his opponents don't sink to his level. Um, they're not calling him childish things, generally speaking. They're debating him on the uh, substance of issues. So he um, is unashamed in espousing racist views, and then will lie about that. Um, He's um, an unabashed liar as well. He delivers these rants with brio, and of course, it's some um, grist to the mill of the white supremacists. They simply lap it up, and now they're chanting the rallies, um, uh, send them back, uh, which, which he doesn't uh, disapprove of. Um, he doesn't even have the, the uh, uh, courage to say, yeah, I am a racist. I mean, if he was one, to be honest about what his, what his strategy is. As I say, I actually don't think he is. He's not anti-racist either, he'll just say anything. Um, but it may um, backfire on him because it's adding vim and vigor to the Democrats. Um, they are more determined to ever, than ever to unseat him. So um, the Democrats are trying to rise above it and be the adults in this conversation and uh, not to follow him down into the gutter. So, uh, as I say, a handful of Republicans have, have distanced themselves from this um, divisive and nauseating rhetoric. So he wants to uh, cause conflict at home. He's um, really increased asperity in American politics. Uh, anyway, contrasts with Independence Day, which is supposedly about national unity, bringing people together, wasn't a partisan thing. Well, nobody told that to Democrats, sorry, to, to Republican supporters. You see them with Trump 2020 banners and uh, MAGA banners and so on. They viewed it as a Trump rally, the first stop in his uh, re-election campaign, and they were right, that's what it was about. So, tell me this. Is, um, is heightening hatred of ethnic minorities in the United States, is that working towards a more perfect union?